Elitri's the best deck! Elitri's the best! Shut the fuck up! Elitri's absolutely shit! Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to destroy the most overhyped, most garbage ass, Golden Boy, aka Fat Boy, garbage brick star level shitty deck I've ever seen in my life. Tuna Gate ass, but Tuna Gate! This deck puts on Tuna Gates! How can you guys have a problem beating this two interruption garbage deck? For love me, I don't know. I'm gonna show you guys now though. But before we do, do check out the most broken, literally the greatest play map I've ever seen in my life. I am in Demian. Iron Man cloth play mat right here. Yo, Thanos, you want some of this? You can't have it. It's only for pendulum players. So if you're a pendulum player and want the greatest mod in the world to blow six spell counter, I am in Demian on your opponent. Check it out on TriffGaming.com. All one players are sold out. We only got two players left. Check it out right now. Before you get into this video, don't forget to smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this video and what you think of Elmich. With that being said, let's go, baby. Let's go. Elvich, you're going down. Let's go. This game, we're going to be facing up off against our boy, Pac. And for those who remember, he was the third player on me, Sam, and Pac's crazy Trip Samurai X1 Las Vegas 3 vs. 3 team. Go check out his YouTube if you haven't already. It'll be in the description below. Now, that being said, let's go slap some Elvich, baby. Now, one thing you guys got to understand about Elvich, okay? You're playing Pendulum. Bro, there is zero, like, the only interruptions they have against you is a counter trap, which they have to tribute their only monster they have, a pop one, so two interruptions, and that's it. Because their DD Crow trap does nothing, and they don't have anything else, and they play, what, like, six hand traps? At best, they're gonna have a pop one, a negate, and, like, an ash blossom. That's three interruptions. It's just a shittier version of Salamangre. It's like Salamangre, except... Uh, instead of pop 2, it's pop 1 because their grave cards don't affect anything and destroying a lich is so easy uh, It's for pendulum, you're playing the best deck and it, like, like DD girl, look at this like this hand over here, what's this against pendulums? this is the freest game Pac's a great player so uh, no offense to us destroying Pac here it's not against like Pac's fault It's pa the only thing that is Pac's fault is that he chose not to play the best deck pendulum but if he played pendulum, this would have been a crazy battle so all he could do here is he knows I'm playing pendulum he knows DD Crow is useless against me, and the only way for his cards to even have any effect is to have an Elitch monster on the field. So he has to neg big time there just to get an Elitch on the field to get the free reborn card to put an Elitch on the field. So even though Elitch, let's say they open broken, let's say they open L land, they might have two extra cards in hand here. Elitch doesn't plus five, they don't even plus two. Maybe they'll plus one if they open the continuous spell, which is only one card that pluses for them, and that's it. The deck just does not plus. Like, what are you going to do here to a Cerberus? What are you going to do here to any hand, let alone a Cerberus? I've openly said that Cerberus is very overrated, and it is. But against Elitch, it is a good card. Not that you need help to beat this deck. But, like, what are you going to do here? If you summon Elixir right off the bat, and let's say Counter Trap off the bat, or pop, let's say you pop the Cerberus before it had counters, it doesn't matter. Like, look at my hand right now. If you pop this and, like, say, negate Abductor before I put it, activate it, you have no more interruptions, and I have... A pot of greed and secrets, uh, a pot of greed and desires, and I'm gonna mighty master your whole board. Like, what are you gonna do to that? I don't get it. Like, like, what's any deck gonna do to that? What's Edledge gonna do to that? There's just no interruptions. So what I want to preach here for you guys watching, and I do this on my Patreon all the time, there's game plans against each deck. This is the specific game plan against Edledge. I know what their interruptions are. They have pop one, they have the grave of, uh, banish a card in grave, I don't care. Pop one and tribute one. That's three interruptions. The grave effect is useless against pendulums. Who gives a shit about that one? Throw that away. All you gotta worry about is pop one, counter shop, negate one, and potentially an ash blossom or an impermanence. Big, big deal, bro. Big deal. That's literally nothing. We've dealt with double of that against Solomon Gray and still OTK their ass, let alone this. So, if you guys wanna learn the game plan against Eldritch, specifically, specifically, follow the Patreon down below. I have different tiers. I like explain it in depth for everyone who, anyone who wants to get better at pendulums. But look at this chronological order. The chronological order is very important because if the way you look at this, I could have easily got my like look at this. I could easily mighty master right now and he loses. I set this up so I could activate the mighty master after I have the counters and that way be let's say he pops Cerberus right now. Cerberus will still survive because it has over four counters. I set that up in a specific way, knowing the interruptions that the Elich has, knowing that I know he doesn't play Compulse, you know, I know what the interruption Elich have. 
I know he has no cards in hand because no hand trap. I know, I know what I'm dealing with. I know I'm dealing with a tribute one, a pop one, and a grave one. So I also know that he has elixir because he set one. So I'm like, okay, uh, like that's all I'm dealing with at best. You know the interruptions that Elich has, always. So now if he pops one, what's he gonna do? His only play here, he must. I use Abductor to search Time Gazer, the biggest big brain play of all time. Abductor for the first time in history draws Time Gazer. This is a very big brain. I talk about it a lot on Patreon. Sign up if you guys wanna learn more, but I have Blue Boy, Boy in hand. He, now he knows how Time Gazer. Pax is a very good player. He knows Time Gazer's effect. If I normal Time Gazer right now, his whole board's getting cleared and he can't do anything about it. You guys understand that? If I normal Time Gazer right now, he can't do anything. He loses automatically. It's literally like checkmate automatically. Because if he activates the pop one on the Mighty Mighty Master, Time Gazer will protect it. So just alone by searching the Time Gazer, he's instantly forced to pop the Mighty Master before it activates its effect. So now let's say he uses Conquistador, he has a Conquistador, obviously. Let's say he uses the Conquistador to pop the Mighty Master. After I remove six counters, I lose counters for nothing. But look at this now. I don't have a lore, so I'm not even gonna know about the time gazer. Just the, the fear of my opponent knowing that I have time gazer forces this is a very big brain forces him to pop my buddy master now. Hence, I don't even have to normal the time gazer. I'm gonna normal my blue boy and then allure of darkness the time gazer. You guys get that? And he knows I have blue boy because I searched it. So he's thinking, oh, I'm good. I'm gonna pop that. He won't be able to do anything. But I have the allure of darkness the time gazer. I'm gonna normal the blue boy. Get it? Like, it's big brain to the max. It's like nine plays deep. Very big brain. These are going to be forced to pop this right now. And he has to do it off the bat. And the only way he can pop it is by wasting an elixir. And look at this. So he's forced to pop it no matter what. And now I'm going to activate the super race effect to banish the elixir to make this card useless. He's going to tribute this to, to uh, negate the effect of Cerberus, tributing the card. But Cerberus doesn't even die because that's four counters. Now look at this situation. I got rid of every single card he has. He has one puny little Eldritch monster, which I'm going to obliterate. Mighty Master did not even activate its effect yet. It just got popped because he had to prematurely do it because I had a Time Gazer. Now I'm in a Lure of Darkness to get rid of the use of Time Gazer. I have a Pot of Desires and a Blue Boy to give me another two cards. Blue Boy is going to get me two cards. So I'm going to have five cards by the end of this. Desires is going to give me six cards. I have six cards on in my hand. I have a Cerberus and an Abductor, and I didn't even Pendulum Summon yet. And a Lure is going to get away the Time Gazer. I have a Spell Power Mastery. Like, this is just absolutely game. Like, there's like, no, look at this. There's nothing he could do. He's a scoops right away. He's like, hey, you're going to have six cards in hand. This is no offense to, El to Pac. It's just that Elich is so free for a pendulum. I can't stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. Now, let's say people say, okay, hey, Trip, he bricked, right? He bricked, man. Uh, let let's see this. This is going to be the best opening Elich could have. He's playing Invoked Elich, which is, which is, in my opinion, the best way to play the deck. Uh, because, if, for one, it put puts uh, the Golden Lord in Grave. And for one, you get another negate, and it's very important. Doesn't waste your normal summon. It's very good in the deck. So here's what he's going to have. A Macabre, a Cosmic Cyclone, an Ash Blossom, and an Elich on the field. That's three three uh, interruptions. Cyclone destroys Pendulum. Ash destroys Pendulum. Macabre negate anything. That's so good, right? It looks like we're going to lose. That's literally free. We don't have a deck. We just have one Cosmic. That's it. In fear of anti-spoil. That's it. Standby. Nothing. Okay. M1. Banish. Get rid of that. Now all we've got to deal with is a Macabre. And I don't, he doesn't, he didn't set any uh, tribute cards. So I'm like, okay, uh, he has three cards in hand. I know he has an Alistair. There's probably some hand trap. I'm assuming some hand trap. I don't know what it is, but some hand trap. Activate Cerberus here, and uh, he's gonna Ash Blossom. So this looks very bad for us, right? But it's part of the game plan. I talk about this all the time on Patreon. It's part of the game plan. You need to stick to your game plan. I know what he has now. He has Macabre, he has an Invoked Alistair. I'm like, all right, that's it. Okay, I, I have four cards in hand. Okay, sure, dude. All right, uh, Chronograph, Time Gazer, uh, Desires. Uh, if I, I didn't even need to uh, summon the Magister, I might even want to save it to normal summon in case, but it doesn't matter. This is game regardless. Master, I'm just going to win now. Look at this. I'm going to show you guys a really cool play. Mighty Master, I'm going to save this knowledge because I'm going to purposely summon the Mighty Master back to my hand, no activate knowledge. I won't draw, but I'm going to negate it with Mighty Master to bounce it to then blow up the field because Mighty Master will get bounced to my hand. So I'm preparing that for the end. I'm going to Pendulum Summon. I recognize that I have to uh, waste the effect of Makaba. So I activate the effect of Reflection because he's going to be forced to negate the Makaba effect. He gets rid of the Golden Lord. I now know exactly what he has in his hand. I'm also fearing an Ibiru just in case. But I know he has the Alistair invoked in his hand for a follow-up. So, okay, great. Now I'm just going to destroy the board and set up Interruptions. That's Banish. I'm going to go into a Selene here. Uh, well, sorry, Daybreaker first. I'm going to trigger Magister effect. Magister summon up Mighty Master. Mighty Master popped the Makaba. I recognize that Edlich has 3,800 defense. I recognize that I don't need to uh, I don't need to to do too much stuff here. I just want to set up the gate, so I popped up Macabo with the Daybreaker. 
Now I could do some cool plays. I could knowledge a card, activate Mighty Master to bounce back, activate Mighty Master and scale, go Celine and uh, summon it to the field again. But if I do that, it's a waste of a card because this cannot be destroyed by card effects. So I can't OTK him right now. I cannot OTK OTK. I can do some a lot of damage. I get like Unicorn to do some other stuff, but it can't be destroyed by effects and has 3,800 defense. So I'm like, okay, you know what? You know what's the best situation? I know he has Alistair. I know he has nothing here. Even if he had an Elder Spell Trap and Grave, I'll negate it with the Mighty Master for free. So what I'm going to do here is a very big brain play. I'm going to go into a, a Selene here uh, just to save the counters. I'm not going to activate the effect of knowledge. And I'm going to keep the Magister on the field because putting counters in the Selene gives the Magister an extra negate. So he's going to summon the Alistair. And to me, I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to negate the invocation and he just straight up loses. I'm going to let him activate any Elder card he has. He draws into a very good card here. He draws into Elixir White Destiny, which will allow him to summon back uh, an Elder if he does some link plays, but I'm like, to me, that doesn't matter at all. He's gonna summon, this is actually even better point his end. He's gonna summon a lick from his grave. I could care less. Doesn't I don't care about his defense or attack or nothing. It's irrelevant to me. Uh, completely irrelevant. He could activate this if he wants in the end phase uh, to set a golden land, but all that's gonna do is give him an interruption on my turn, which I don't care. I'm just gonna negate. Uh, he's thinking what he should do here. He couldn't go into that because they're the same names. So he takes that back. Uh, so he's like, I'm gonna enter battle phase, no problem. Magister effect, remove three from Selene. I mean, I'm a card in the grave. Selene's not even gonna summon anything. It is there to hold counters, and he cannot attack the Selene because of Mighty Master. And if he attacks the Mighty Master, I get a spell. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna let you. The only card he has to kill the Mighty Master is this Elit. It's a cool little lock here. He has to attack this, he has to attack this. If he attacks the Magister, he just goes back and scale. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna activate Magister effect, summon Reflection, Reflection, bounce this, bounce the Elit back to his hand. He cannot use it again because he already used its effect. Now all the monsters can't clear any of my monsters. 2800, 2700, he can't clear anything. At least stay on field, have scales, he loses next turn. So okay, he's gonna activate this to try and bait up the Mighty Master. I'm like, go ahead, bro, I don't care. I'm just gonna save my card for the invocation. If he activates invocation, I'm gonna negate that with my Mighty Master. Uh, and there's literally nothing you can do at this point. Activates invocation, hoping I don't negate it. I negate it, and there's nothing you can do. He has literally, he has no interruptions left. There's nothing you can do whatsoever. Uh, and I, I easily win. Jackal, summon Sir, banish, attack for game. So, uh, great game there from Pac. He, he did everything he could in his ability, but I, it's just preaching right now. Preaching, preaching, preaching how easy it is for Pendulums to obliterate El Lich, which is just the freest victory I've ever seen since Brick Stars. So if you guys like the video, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Check out all the links down below. I stream every single day on Twitch. So go follow my Twitch and check out the people sure game with us on TriffGaming.com. Hope you like the video. See you in the next video. Peace.